All you need is just a strong desire and you'll bask in the sun in the courtyard of a French cafe. And in front of your eyes, the icy peaks will be sparkling. You can reach this with the energy of your thoughts. In a dream or what, the reader asks in surprise. No, in reality, an achievement of the desired depends on only you. That's from Dr. Konstantin Kordkov, The Energy of Consciousness. Welcome back to season 10 of the Neuroscience Meets Social and Emotional Learning Podcast, where we connect the science-based evidence behind social and emotional learning that's finally being taught in our schools today and emotional intelligence training used in our modern workplaces for improved well-being, achievement, productivity, and results. Using what I saw as the missing link the application of practical neuroscience. I'm Andrea Samadhi, an author and an educator with a passion for learning, and launched this podcast five years ago with the goal of bringing all the leading experts together in one place to uncover the most current research that would bring back how the brain learns best by taking us all to new and often unimaginable heights. For today's episode number 307, I'm beyond excited to have this opportunity to speak with Dr. Konstantin Korotkov for many reasons that started when I found him as one of the inventors of GDV, Gas Discharge Visualization, while researching Dr. Joe Dispenza for our last episode. I had no idea what a trip I would go on reading his books that took me all over the world and into many different exciting and mind-boggling directions. My questions for Dr. Korotkov started with the fact that we all have an energy field, we're all connected, and we can influence each other. Dr. Korotkov calls this electrophonics and explains its origin that goes back to 1777 in Brazil and then Russia. While I always had wondered about the science behind this technology, I had no idea what else his work would open up my mind to. Here's a bit more about Dr. Korotkov's background. He's a doctor of sciences and a professor working at the University of St. Petersburg, Russia. In over 40 years of scientific activity, he's published more than 300 scientific articles, 12 books translated into many European languages, and he holds nine patents. In his youth, he was actively engaged in mountaineering at the championship level in the Soviet Union. All his life, he's had a passion for travel. In the last 25 years, he's been among those who've been designing devices for gas discharge visualization, or GDV, which took the Curlian effect to the next level, which allows for rapid analysis of the human health condition, and in many cases, identifies the hidden causes of diseases and specific systems while revealing organs that require special attention. This technology is widely used in the world today. We briefly met Dr. Kardkov in our last episode, where he mentioned his hard work that's broken through many levels of achievements, and I can't express enough just how lucky we are to have this opportunity to speak with him today. I've been reading his books to prepare for this interview, and the questions I originally wrote were scratched off the list as I uncovered more and more about the work that Dr. Kordkov has done, working to bridge the gap between the great mysteries of life that are in the unseen world with the measurable world of science. In our last episode, I put a video explanation from Dr. Kordkov in the show notes where he explains the history of his GDV invention that began with what we know to be called Curlian photography that was not embraced by the scientific community. I mentioned that I know this well, because this was one of the reasons my first book, The Secret for Teens Revealed, couldn't be taught in our schools when I first began working with students with social and emotional learning and the importance of having a good attitude that I know shows up from the inside out. And Jeff Kleck from episode 246 
circled curly and photography in the second chapter of this book and he wrote science can't prove that well with all due respect to those who think our thoughts cannot influence our future they can and gdb technology shows it we can find articles all over pubmed showing that we have an energy field that we're all connected and we can influence each other Dr. Kortkov calls this electrophonics, and it shows that we have energy fields. It shows we have physical energy distribution, emotional energy distribution, and psychological energy distribution, and our relationship of our inner state to the outer world. I have so many questions stemming from all the books and articles I read highlighting Dr. Kardkov's work, and I look forward to uncovering some of the mysteries of the world with this fascinating scientist who, while he does live in Russia, he'll be tuning in from France today. He might as well be sitting right next to me, though, because I do believe, like he does, that we're all connected. Let's meet Dr. Konstantin Kardkov, and dive into some of the most fascinating topics that will challenge us to think deeply before we make assumptions with anything in our life. Привет, Dr. Korakov, and bonjour, mon ami. It's incredible to meet with you today. Are you still in France or are you in Russia right now? At the moment, I'm in France. Okay. Yes, I'm in Spain. <laughs> so then I'm traveling all the time, practically. Okay. Very, very good. World traveler. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to dive into some of the questions that I've really spent many years wondering about. So I can't tell you how excited I am to learn from you today and then share this knowledge with others who tune into the podcast around the world. So thank you for being here. Thank you for organizing this because we all know that mass media and uh, YouTube video, that's what's the driving, driving the world now. So it's very, very important. Definitely. I'm so glad I found you. And and it really, I, I talked about it in the background in the show notes, that it was really when I was studying Joe Dispenza that I found you. And, and so this is, this is exciting for me. And I would normally open up with some questions about where you are. You're traveling all over the world and find out what you're focused on. But then I started reading your books and I started thinking, what I, where am I even going to start with this? So could you maybe take us back to where you started in your career? Maybe some of the mysteries of the world that you've been looking to unsolve and orient us to where you are today professionally. Okay, so... Um... First of all, uh, there are two topics. Um, I am a quantum physicist on my background, and I graduated in Soviet Union um, many years ago. <laughs> it was um, 74, 1974. Seems to me yours even wasn't planned yet. <laughs> I was born in 71 for, for me. Oh, okay, I was, yes, yes. Oh, I was yes, three. Yes. Yeah, seriously. Okay, very good. So, um, and then I've spent many years in uh, research in Soviet Union on quantum physics, on uh, um, uh, plasma physics, laser physics, atmosphere physics. So it was I was deeply involved in uh, all those topics. And uh, then uh, you see somehow I now I, I see that all my life was a set of mystical experiences. So it was not um, predominantly for me to do something. It was just guidance, some spiritual guidance. And I now I know this for sure, because even what we are talking about now, it is uh, some spiritual topic, because I had so many chances to be killed in my life. Really? Yeah, absolutely, very many. From, yes. from the work you're doing, uh, people. No, 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 no. no of, course oh, okay. not, of course not. I'm not uh, some crazy scientist. No, no, no. I'm. Uh, I was professional mountaineer. Oh, okay. Okay. And I was doing very, very top top level mountaineering in the 80s. Um, and several times I was just nearby <laughs> death stations. Uh, my friend nearby me was killed by same stone that fell on both of us <laughs> and i was intact okay, practically yeah. the next topic uh, i was an avalanche very bad avalanche and we 
uh, we, we were together with my friend and we decided that it's over because we were taken by avalanche and we were driven to the edge about uh, 600 meters about uh, 2000 feet and we didn't we were unable to stop and then somehow we stopped and all the avalanche came <laughs> under us wow. because it was it was happened that we had a rope in between us and rope was fixed by little stone like this little stone you see it's a miracle a little miracle <laughs> so, so so you started to think there's more to this yes absolutely so i had many cases of this kind but it's not uh, it's just in private life but in uh, my professional life again it was a set of um, unusual situations um you know that i was involved in very serious quantum physics i was doing research i was preparing phd but then i was introduced to kirlian effect it was to study the effect uh, very well known by the time to study light from different subjects human being uh, leaf uh, plants uh, seeds and to study this light to get information about uh, the condition of a of, uh, subject and it was kirlian photography but it was very interesting for me and then but it was just curiosity not more than that but then uh, our academy of science of soviet union decided to make some research what does it mean kirlian effect and a very high level academician academician Dvyatkov, he was the curator of our university he came to the rector and he thought okay we need to study this rector of course he came to the head of big de quantum department or oh, we need to study this the other quantum department came to the head of laboratory okay we need to study this head of laboratory came to the lowest person <laughs> it was me <laughs> by that time uh. and i started this research and uh, it was very interesting because we created equipment we did very, very interesting research but then at some moment again i say i had some i became ill uh and laying in bed for half of a year i came to understanding that i need to change my professional life mm -hmm. so my you can imagine my phd on quantum physics was practically ready maybe half a year it would be already done but i've decided no no i need to go other way around i need to go to new line which much much more interesting for me and uh, so I moved to the direction. Of course, my boss was very unhappy with this, <laughs> but <laughs> I was quite persistent. And this way, I did my first PhD on this Kirlian effect, on PhD in quantum physics. And then I started developing this line. And again, you can imagine, nobody believed that it will be something worthwhile. Yes. So it's some nonsense. Some, but I had this inner vision that it's something in this. It was my deep inner vision. And when the Soviet system crashed and everything <laughs> fell off, <laughs> I had a time to start my own activity, my own business. I was able to earn some money in business, but then I got to understand this. I'm not a businessman, not at all. <laughs> business is not mine. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and I put all my, all my money that I had in this new development and research. So by that time we were quite poor. <laughs> we had very poor life, but I spent all the money instead of buying a car or something like this, I put in research and development. And this way it started. And then it was a set of some mystical meetings, mystical events, some crazy ideas that I had. Because all, um, I would say, algorithms that we have now, first I get this idea, like this, it's here. <laughs> and then we had to prove it. That it's really something. This is this is so so much for me to to go on here because I knew of curly and photography. I've had my photo done with my husband and looked at our energy field, and I put it into the first book I wrote that I worked with with students talking about how important our attitude is. And you know, the first person that um, we sold our programs into the schools, they circled curly and effect and said, "Science can't prove this." So I've been on a mission. I, I knew that there's more to this that meets the eye. So when I found you, this just really helped me with this. 
But uh, you're having a an event in Orlando, Florida. I just want to bring this up because I just wonder right off the bat, what are who would be going to this event in Orlando, November 10th to the 12th? It's online. You could go virtual or in person. Who would be going to this? People who want to like energy workers who, who would be the attendees? You see, uh, we uh, were thinking about this uh, event uh, for several years because we have some events in uh, Europe. Uh, we have online events. Uh, we have it for many, many years, for more than 20 years. But um, you see, American audience, it is very sensitive to new topics and it is very highly developed even compared with Europe, because I know the situation in different countries. That is why with my good friend, Nima Farshit, we decided to organize this event in Orlando. He did a great job in organizing everything. And I can tell you, it will be not for professionals or for people who are using only BioWell. No, it will be event for everybody. Because uh, we have very interesting people, very interesting presenters. For example, I just give you some names, not all of them. Bruce Cryer, he's co-creator of Hot Mass Institute. You know, it's a fantastic institute. They do wonderful research. I follow them and they use their equipment for many decades. And this is really everything about connection between our heart and our spirit. Then it will be Beverly Rubik, Dr. Beverly Rubik. She would talk about uh, electromagnetic fields about danger of 5G, about what we can do with this. And she's a great researcher. Again, we know each other for many, many years. Dr. Michael Borking, he's father of naturopathic endocrinology. So he's tremendous, he's genius, real genius. I can tell because I know him again for many years. And he created uh, transdermal um, medicine, so he uh, created many, many uh, his own uh, recipes. They produce it. Uh, and we uh, I'm using myself it for more than 10 years. Um, and uh, he's a great researcher as well. He's using BioWell. He's using kinesiology. He has fantastic mind, very deep mind. Next topic, uh, next one, it will be Krishna Madapa. It's again my dear friend. Uh, he lives between United States and India, and he combines spiritual tradition with science. So he will talk about this combination, about this interrelation, and he is so interesting person. When he talks, it's like a fairy tale, <laughs> like a song. So it's really interesting. Next, it is uh, Tiffany Barsotti. She is. Uh, amazing person she's an author she's internationally respected teacher of human transformation she is together with her husband they do a lot of uh, transformation work for people and of course she has tremendous experience in this and of course she would be able to talk about this um then uh grandmaster david harris he's a uh, creator of uh, remote healing software you see we understand that we live in digital world now and uh, healing software remotely. It's an amazing story. And it really works. I heard uh, about it years ago, people doing this. And yeah, it's yes, just yes, and he, he will be there. Think, yeah, the healing uh, years ago, um, people ending their teaching careers and going into healing and saying, I have this machine that can pick up what's happening in your body I'm in Arizona, they're in El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're using technology. And it just blows my mind, but you understand this. Absolutely. So it is very important for all those people to present themselves. For example, Dr. Rajan uh, Narayan, he is a chief clinician and researcher of life in yoga association. We uh, work with them for many, many years. You know that yoga is so well known. And he's a brilliant researcher. He's a very delicate person. And he's a very, very deep person. And of course, he is top-level professional in yoga. Just recently, he uh, finished a book about uh, yoga and uh, with the demonstration that yoga is not just uh, exercises. It's a spiritual movement, tremendous spiritual movement. 
and he will be talking about this. Then, for example, Joaquin Machado, he created amazing quantum technology that protects from electromagnetic fields, which uh, it helps uh, people to rejuvenate themselves. And he has science under this. It's proven by clinical research. Um, then uh, many other people, he, they will be talking about different technology, Tachyon technology, healing technology, sound therapy network, acupuncture, so many different topics. So what I mean? I mean that this conference uh, in, in Orlando, it will be event interesting for everybody. And of course, it's possible to come there. You are very, people are very welcome because it's much easier to meet each other. It's very interesting to meet people. I love it. And of course, I'll be there all the time. And But it's possible to join online as well, just to listen to this. Uh, so uh, I invite all the people to come there. It's really very, very interesting. It will be very interesting research because you see, we decided to make it not just on some topic, not on the topic of some technology, not only on the topic of consciousness and some ideas, because you know that we have conference on consciousness where it's absolutely unclear for lay people to understand what it's talk about. Right. Very, very complicated now research. Mm -hmm. But here uh, we want to give an overview, an overview of different approach of what we can do to help people to be wealthy and to be happy in their life. Incredible. Well, I'll put the link in the show notes so anyone can find it. And when I looked at it, I was impressed. It gathered everyone together, like you just explained, everyone in the industry that can help us to understand this. And, you know, I, I read in one of your books, it cannot be because this can never be so. And then it turned into a slogan, it cannot be because it conflicts with science. So now you're showing us how this does not conflict, how we can show the unseen world with science. Is, is that correct? Yes, you're absolutely right, because uh, we have technology, technology based on physics. And in uh, my papers, in my books, it's very clear definition of what does it mean, this physics. We had several, maybe three or four PhD in uh, quantum physics, in uh, technical uh, physics. So explaining all details of what is all about. So it is solid scientific data. And that's why we have more than two, 300 uh, papers published in parallel journals in different languages. So, but the main idea we need to show people, they are not just material. They are much more than that. They are light beings. They are spiritual beings. And they need to believe in this. They need to believe in the power of their own mind. They need to believe in the power of their own will. They need to believe in angels that protect us, that guard us. Then it makes life much more full. And then we can live full life and enjoy this life. And then we need only to understand what we need in our life. Not just money. Money is just a simple topic. But we need to understand higher purpose, why we are here, what for, and what we want to do in our life. How we can help other people around ourselves. How we can send positive messages to other people. And in our time, now we have difficult times worldwide. We know this. In all the countries. I'm just traveling in Europe. Uh, a lot of difficult problems. A lot. Not to tell about Russia, that's in total turmoil now, you know this. Very bad situation, very poor. Uh, but it's worldwide, because after this COVID uh, experiment, they were able to create new world order. We understand it was John, it was very precise plan how it was done. And what we can do, we can only help each other to keep our spirit high. The only way. Exactly. You're talking my language. This is everything I believe to the soul level. So, so now well, you talked about so much in there and I have some questions later on that, but I feel like I want to just bring it up here because it's so important, the connections that we have. 
And you said somewhere about telepathy, you know, keeping the world order higher, maybe sending messages. And it sounds so, so strange, like sending good thoughts to people. We know it as prayer, you know, I'll pray for you. But what can you explain to me, maybe from your point of view, from a science point of view, what happens if I'm connected maybe coherently to another person's brain? How can I transfer and influence another person with my thoughts and how can they influence me? How does that happen? You see, you mentioned prayer. Yeah. Prayer, it's just a formal way how we can send our positive intention to someone. And it was uh, historically in all religions, but in reality, it uh, doesn't matter whether it is Christianity, Buddhism, Islam, or Taoism. It's all the same process. We need to understand, we are quantum beings. Our system operates <clears throat> on quantum level. It's the basic level. <clears throat> Next level, there's a level of biofield. And again, biofield is now a well-accepted notion in science. So now you can write articles with uh, biofield uh, name uh, in it. And uh, biofield is our internal field. So we communicate with the environment and with other people, with our field. When we touch each other by hand or just touching, we exchange this energy. Because from the other point of view, uh, biofield is energy. And we are energy beings. So we are all interconnected on very deep level. And that is why it is very easy to send in, uh, intention to one from one person to another person. Of course, I prefer and I like when people send positive intentions. But it may be negative intentions as well. We have so many examples of negative intentions. Unfortunately, in our world, in our modern world, negativity is much more than positivity. That is why we need to create positive intention. And from physical point of view, from scientific point of view, it is interaction of two uh, uh, oscillators. What does it mean oscillator? It is a physical subject that uh, generates some waves. We always talk about electromagnetic waves. It's uh, one level, but it's much more than that. Our biofield, it's not only electromagnetic. It's other frequencies. It's other type of energy. We can uh, name it uh, subtle energy. We can name it quantum energy. Uh, still, there are many discussions, many topics. Now we have, uh, uh, when we go to a conference on consciousness, we have a lot of theories uh, to explain this. And I have, uh, together with my colleague, uh, Raul, Dr. Raul Verde from, uh, 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 from Canada, we published a couple of papers on this topic. So it means that we emit waves. We emit fields. And those fields, they communicate with each other like this. If we are in resonance, then we have very direct communication. And people who are in love, people who love each other, it may be lovers, it may be uh, some family, it may be uh, parents, it may be children, whatever, friends. Then we have same frequency. It's interesting that with our technology, Bible technology, we have many programs, but in one program we can see absolutely clear Compar uh, comparison of two, um, I would say, frequency lines. So if people are in love, their frequency life are very, very similar. And that's very interesting. So, so is that how the communication happens? Because they're similar, so you can think and send thoughts to fit similar frequency? Is that how it works? Wait, 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 wait. You can send your intention, your field to anybody. And people can attune to this or not. It depends. It. So it's not that from the very beginning you have same frequency. No, of course not. It's not only with uh, some love beings they, we have same frequency. For example, all the babies, they have same frequency as their mother. It is very well known. 
So babies, they belong to their mothers, first of all, to, to some extent to their fathers, but mostly their mothers. That's why you know that for babies, it's very important to be near by their mother, to feel it, to feel, to have contact, physical contact. But even without physical contact, they need to be just around. It's very interesting. Same story we have with animals. Dogs, they're very sensitive to this. Cats, very sensitive. And all the owners of pets, they know that if their, their the pets love them, then they immediately try to come to them and to have this contact. And it's very well known um, book of Rupert Sheldrake about dogs, uh, how they feel when their owners come home. You know this book? <laughs> Yes. So it means that uh, one level, it is material level of some physical subjects, material subjects, our body. Next level, those are level of fields and belief in this world. And it's now, it's a very understandable. When you go to your car and you click button and you open your car, you're not surprised. Yeah. Right. What does it means? Interaction at the distance. But why would you be surprised if you go to as a person, you click your mind and you have contact with this person? It's the same process. Absolutely the same process. But the only difference that your car is settled to this frequency initially, predominantly. With person, of course, you need to establish contact. And it takes some efforts. That is why, as again and again, I repeat this, we need to send positive intentions. Then people respond. Not only people. Cat, dogs, they respond. I have very good um, relation with uh, dogs, cats, and horses. Because I just send them positive intention. And they feel it. Same now, with baby. What happens, though? Like, I understand the, the positive and keeping the energy high. What happens if there's someone that's not at your energy level? And it conflicts like a like not a good relationship. How do you how do you deal no, with that? Of course, we need to understand. There are people who are open to intent, positive intention, people who are closed, and people who are against this. We have a lot of negative topics coming in the world. We have crimes, we have war, we have killings, we have um, people killing each other. So it's not just for everybody. No, not at all. Uh, we may be just a little community of people who try to make positive shifts. But you see, in last maybe 25 years, 30 years, I see tremendous shift, tremendous. I remember in the beginning of, in the 80s, beginning of 90s, it was just some very rare people. Now it's a huge movement. Now more and more people worldwide, they understand this. They understand the power of intention. And we have many experiments. Look to the experiments of Lynn McTaggart with her wonderful books. It's proven by different technologies, not only by our technology, but different technologies. That yes, uh, look to experiments of Masari Immortal again. And now, when um, I talk with children, I tell them, very let's make very simple experiments. Put some seeds in a while with some um, water and then send positive intention to one seeds and send negative intentions to another seeds. And after several days, you see the difference. <laughs> it's very clear difference and very funny experiment. So it means that um, our mind power our intention is driving force of our world. All everything that we have around ourselves, all our technology, all our science, all what we have around ourselves, it is created by mind. First, you need to think, you need to have this in your mind, in someone's mind. Only then it will be settled. You know that just a couple of days ago, Nobel Prize was given to several scientists who created these uh, electronic dots. And it's interesting. It was two scientists who found this simultaneously in one at the same time. What does it mean? 
it's a power of intention. It means that uh, it was some ideas that were circulating in informational field. Those people who was working in this field very hard, they got this idea and then simultaneously they did it. And we have a lot of stories of this in science, a lot. Starting from invention of radio, of uh, uh, quantum physics, there was many cases. Uh, Newton and Leibniz, they had a long discussion who, who was the first creator. So it is typical, uh, it's very well known. All the world around ourselves created by our mind, by our intention, by power of positive intentions. If we believe in this, we do it. If people are religious, for them it's much easier to believe mm -hmm. because they have this technical system of prayer and then it works very well. I love this. This is great. And I want to just take the question to another book because I first started with understanding electrophonics that you call it, right? The GDV and the other term. And then when I when I looked you up and I found some of your other books, I found the book about the mysterious mummies of Nazca. And I didn't even know I had to, I, I read the samples of the book first and I had to buy the book to find out what were these things that you discovered? And so I've just got to go and ask, what was the purpose of that book? And what do you think you discovered in Nazca? Um, you see, it's really a very interesting, again, it's a mystical story, <laughs> as I wrote in my book, because I wasn't intended to go to Peru to study this. And uh, somehow it happened by itself. So again, uh, as many cases in my life, it was just organized by some higher forces. And uh, it was really serious research, very serious. So coming back uh, to Russia, I was able to organize a team of scientists, top level scientists, genetists, uh, uh, medical doctors, uh, uh, professionals in uh, some uh, elemental research. And this team, big team, was able to create really make good very good study and same uh, study was done in different countries similar study and the most uh, for us the most important was a study of um, um, images uh, because it allows scientists uh, to see details of the construction of the body and from other hand it's a genetic study because it allows to see uh, dna and uh, origin of the DNA. So uh, it is absolutely clear that uh, this is something totally new to the world. Just recently, it was big um, hearings in Mexican Congress, uh, where it was presenting Jaime Mausan. He's a wonderful person. Uh, he has his own TV uh, show for many, many years in South, uh, in South America. And all South America watches him because it's really a very popular show. And he's a great person. We spent some time with him during this research. And uh, he was presenting these results to uh, Mexican Congress. In 2019, we had a very similar presentation in Peru in Congress. Same hearing was in the United States just recently. So it means that the world is um, paying more and more attention to this topic. Uh, of course, we don't know what it was, what it is. We don't know whether it is from cosmos, from aliens somewhere, uh, whether it is from somewhere, we don't know. There are different hypotheses, and it's only hypothesis. But 100% sure, we found absolutely type new of species. And it's proven that it's not um, dolls, it's not uh, some uh, artificially created, it's a real ancient species. Uh, they have several thousand years of origin, and they are different. But uh, in my own hand, I was able to keep uh, six of them. So it's not just one piece. So it means that they really did exist. And you know, it was all found in Nazca area. Nazca, very well known, those are a Nazca plate with different images, geoglyphs. It's very well known. Yeah. 
Now uh, they found a lot of geoglyphs, not only on this plain, but on other parts of Nazca territory. Oh, this Nazca civilization, it's known to scientists. They made a lot of excavations, discovery, and they had a very good pottery. They had very good, uh, uh, some clothing. Uh, but uh, still, it's absolutely unclear why they did it. What for? If it is quite simple civilization, as we think, because it was quite simple. They didn't have um, iron. Um, they didn't have uh, big technology, but still, they did this. Geoglyphs. Still, it was just, uh, some uh, unknown subjects over there. Nazca mummies. So to my mind, it is very important because it shows us that we are having some paradigms in our science. If you look to historical books, it's written step by step. It was this and this and this and this. So everything is clear. But next topic. We have 400,000 years of human development. 400,000. People was in our same body as we have, same mind type, type. and we have only ten thousand years of our known to us civilization. What does it mean? It means that if we look to this all this time for as a one day, we have a long, long day, and then in the last ten minutes we created uh, Egyptian civilization. Uh, then uh, Chinese civilization, then Mesopotamic civilization. That's it. So it's absolutely clear that it's not it's not logical. And we believe, and we have a lot of data that it was civilizations before ours. Of course, we have only some glimpses of this, but we have it, and a lot of glimpses, a lot of unknown subjects, unknown artificial topics in many parts of the world. In my book, I present some of these materials, but we have a lot of this. So it means my main idea that first of all, we need to understand, we need to be open in our mind. We, because our science is very rigid. If you don't come inside the paradigm, you are thrown out. And it was always in science and it is now. You know, we presented those data to paleontologists, to um, archaeologists, but they all reject it. They all say, oh, it's all nonsense. It doesn't exist. How it's possible? We presented this in Peruvian Congress and we told you, okay, guys, you have treasure in your hands. It's your own Peruvian treasure. No one wants to steal it from you. Please take it and present it to the world, study this. No, no response. They are not interested. Because it doesn't come inside uh, the scientific paradigm, officially accepted. And we had, we had many, many cases in uh, the history of science. In one of my books, I present these ideas, and I present that science doesn't like new ideas. They like to follow the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is uh, really opening my mind, and I, and I knew it would. And you said it already. You said you're not on the business side of things. Um, you're you're really here to raise the consciousness of the world with what it's clear in every book. You're here to just say there's more. There's more to this. And what do you think would be your message then for all of us to, you know, just the average person, you know, maybe people who who hear this and they think, well, this is this is nice, but how do I? raise my consciousness more and send more kindness into the world? How do I raise the world? What would you suggest for anybody? You see, in our research, we have uh, many problems, of course, in our system. But we have one problem that shows us position of our chakras. And uh, you know that chakras are uh, Ayurvedic presentation of um, energy centers. They are aligned along the spine. We present this from chakra point of view, from the point of view of nervous centers as well, because we understand that it's related to vegetative nervous system, to autonomic nervous system. And we have tremendous experience in this. The most important when chakras are aligned. And 
We have people of this kind. If people are doing meditation on an everyday basis, if people are concentrated on their spiritual topics, then they have their chakras aligned. So it may be meditators, it may be some monks, some priests of different regions, it may be business people. I have several business um, people I know very well who run multi-million business and their chakras are aligned because they're very focused on what they do. And you know, business is one of the very important and very interesting topics in life. So it means that it depends on yourself, how you keep your inner self. Now we have tremendous problem in the world with stress and anxiety. Tremendous problem. Consumption of different uh, anti-depression medications is amazing, it's uh, huge. It's billion dollar business and it doesn't help. So because all these drugs, they change your chemical structure of your body and your brain activity. But this only temporary works. Of course, if you have a headache, you can take some pill and it stops. But if you are in stress and depression, it, it wouldn't work. The only way you can do, you can work by yourself. With your own consciousness, with your own mind. And that's possible. That's, that's, we can do this. But of course, you need, first of all, to understand this, that you can do it yourself. Second, you need to look where to find the best way. And now we have great teachers like Jordan Spencer, uh, like uh, many other teachers uh, in different countries. I know many of them. And uh, that's one way. As well, you can go to internet. There are programs, there are software. Again, it's, all is possible. But of course, first of all, you need to believe in the power of your own mind in the power of your own intention. And then you can do it. And find the way. It's, and it's very important to understand that one more topic. It's not easy. It's not just click. You decide, oh, next day you are all aligned. No. No. It's hard work. Uh, it's hard work and you should do it same as, same as uh, to improve your health issues. Again, we know what to do, how to do this, but it's hard work. You need to change your style, you need to change your attitude to food, to activity. Then if you do this, then you can do it. So first of all, in your mind, then in your body. And it's all interconnected. And in the world, right? Once you do that, then you can influence others. Yes, and then you can influence the world. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Dr. Kardkov, have I missed anything uh, with my questions for you? Is there anything that you think is important for the world to know? You see, now, to my mind, the most important to know that we live in 21st century. So, first of all, we have tremendous medicine, fantastic medicine. My wife is medical doctor, my doctor is medical doctor, so I have tremendous respect to medicine and I have many friends. So if we need, we need to use modern medicine. And first, of course, in urgent cases, and you have some grave problem, then of course you need to go to modern medicine, for sure, I'm not sure. At the same time, for everyday life, you need to use all the means of complementary medicine, alternative medicine, integrative medicine. And again, it's very well known what to do. My latest book was, uh, it is dedicated to the principle and practice of integrative medicine. And I show that there are many, many technologies that can help people to be uh, strong and healthy. Next topic, of course, uh, we understand that with these modern technologies, we should use it, but we should be careful at the same time. Because we have a lot of negative effects of mobile technologies, not just only by electromagnetic field, but by influence to people. Young people, they don't read books. They, they just look to, to their mobile phones. 
Just they spend all the time. And it means they don't develop their mind. Because only when you think about something, you, cre- you develop your mind, you change your structure. And again, it's a very important topic in the modern world. So it means that we live in the world with the time of transition. We transit from 20th century, we transit to absolutely new century. And it's only the beginning. If you look around, uh, 20 years ago, it was practically no mobile phones. It was no electrical cars. Now we have fantastic development in all this, in all technologies. And we have very big development in spiritual topics as well, as we discussed with you. Now more and more people understand that they need to develop themselves. And I believe that when we talk people, talk people that it's not just voodoo science, it's not just woo woo but it's real science. It is supported by science, by hundreds of research in different countries. Then people understand, yes, it's real. And then they can change themselves. That's the main topic. Dr. Kardkov, I want to thank you so much for this time you spent with me today. I've read all your books. I'll continue to study them because there's so much in them. I'm so grateful to have found someone who's opening my eyes to bridging this gap between the unseen world and what we're truly capable of with science. Thank you so much for this interview. For for people who want to learn more about you, I've definitely put the Orlando link if they want to attend that virtually or in person. But where else can people find what you what you've been working on? Um, you see, we have uh, of course our biowell.com website. Yeah. There are many information, and we have iumap.club, okay. International Union of Medical and Applied Biography. Dot club. Got it. I will yeah, know. we collected a lot of uh, papers, more than two hundred papers, and they are all available for download. So, if people are interested in research, of because we have research from many many countries, from many scientists researchers then, of course, it would be very good. Plus, you know that we are developing absolutely amazing lines, for example, to study environment. Amazing lines. I'm really surprised I developed these sensors. And uh, now we have these sensors, special sensors, Sputnik, and it creates amazing results. It allows uh, to measure meditation. It allows to measure human intentions, human emotions. Plus, it allows to measure environment. My latest article was dedicated to study the influence of pyramids in different parts of the world. And it's, it's uh, results are amazing. I really miss how it works. So, so thrilling. You, you've got a fan over here. I'll continue to study your work and put it out. Uh, what, what new things you come up with, I'll continue to put on the podcast. So thank you so much for this time today. Any final thoughts to close out? The final thought is if we believe in ourselves, if we believe in positive intention, then we can change the world. That's the most important topic we can do. I'm with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kardkov. Thank you. It was a tremendous pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you for your kindness and for your deep, deep understanding of everything. Thank you. Thank you. So grateful to have met you. My pleasure. Some final thoughts to close out this interview with Dr. Kordkov. To close out this episode, I do need to go back to our study of the Silva program that we covered to help us to take all of our meditation practices to new heights. This four-part series is by far the most listened to episode that we've ever covered here on the podcast. If you've listened to it, you'll recall that we opened up with a quote from Jose Silva that reminds us, once we learn to use our minds to train it, it will do some astounding things for us, as you'll soon see. Dr. Kortkov's work is a clear example of what's possible when you take a belief in yourself, use your mind to think creatively, and then take action on the ideas that we create in our minds. There's nothing we can't accomplish. 
Once we use our mind in this way, it's important that we continue to put goodness out into the world and help others with the power of positive intention. This way, together, we really can change the world. And with that thought, I'll close out this episode. I'll see you next week with an interview with elite champion Hazel Gale, and then we'll continue with our review of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work that really is the next step from here. We can't do this all at once, but one episode at a time, I do think that those of you who tune in regularly will see that we're all connected to each other, and it matters what energy we're putting out into the world. I hope this episode opened up your mind to how powerful each of us really is, individually. And then together, once we believe in the power of our own mind, we can begin to enjoy life in a whole new way, far beyond what we may have imagined in the past. I'll see you next week.